There are several things happening in this palace. And people might just wonder if there is law and order. The truth of the matter is this. There is laxity on the part of the maidens and the guards. And because of that, I assembled you here. I have the power to recommend any of you to be sacked. But believe me, I do not want to use that power. So, I suggest that we all sit up at our posts and responsibilities. Maidens should do less makeup and gossip. And to you, the gods, you need to avoid all forms of truancy. All hands need to be on deck to make this happen. Another thing, no matter should be taken to the king or the queen without first discussing with me. And then I will decide whether the king or the queen should hear it. This attitude of maidens running to the queen and guards running to the king must stop with immediate effect. All information must go through me. Are there any questions? No, sir. No. Any questions? No. Okay. In the absence of no questions, I declare this meeting closed. But remember, you must all sit up and do what is expected of, of you. Dismissed. My boy, I um, asked you to come here to reassure you of my absolute trust in your ability as Chief of the Palace Guards. You can always come to me. Thank you, uh, you have access to all the private places in the palace. Well, your late father. Uh, your late father was a nobleman. He was noble as the chief of palace staff. So it is not a great wonder that uh, you have decided to step into his noble shoes. I'm at your service, your majesty. As a chief of palace guards, you have the power to hire and fire any guard you, you find wanted. And most importantly, Chief Madu told me three days ago that he suspects one of the maidens, the one from his village, of immoral activities. Now I will want you to investigate that thoroughly. No maiden who works for the palace must be less than humble, chaste, and obedient at all times. Your Majesty, I am aware of the consequences of immorality in this palace. And I can assure you that this maiden involved will be investigated and punished if found guilty. Good. We must let them know that this kingdom is a sacred kingdom. And many of the things that other kingdoms get away with it are all take for granted will bring our kingdom to her knees. So we have to be careful at all times. Your Majesty, I am humbled at the confidence reposed in me. And I can assure you that as head of the guards of this palace, I will do my best. I will keep you posted, Your Majesty. Oh, I have absolute confidence in you. But uh, always remember, if you need anything, come to me. Thank you, Your Majesty. Thank you. Your Majesty, 
Why are you looking at me as if we are equals? <laughs> what is wrong with you? How many times do you want me to tell you that I love you so much? I'm yours and yours alone. Absolutely rubbish. Um, I feel like undressing and making you feel like a woman. Mm. And <laughs> why would you say you were tempted? What you said is what you ought to do. Why? I, I mean, I, mean I, 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 I agree with you, but as you can see, I, I have all the kingly paraphernalia and uh, I cannot undress in broad afternoon to play with my wife. We have all nights to do that. Challenging the woman in me, and it is gradually getting on me. Well, uh, yeah, yes. um. <clears throat> well, um, I have instructed the chief of palace guards to investigate the uh, allegation that um, Chief Madam I brought the other day. I've asked him to let me have his report as soon as his investigations are concluded. And what makes you think that I am interested in whatever allegation, accusation, or whatever Madu made? Listen, King, I am of the opinion that these maidens should be allowed to enjoy their bodies. You are not talking like the queen. Immorality is a serious crime. And our maidens cannot and must not be allowed to misuse their bodies. It will bring terrible problems to the land. And why would you concern yourself 
for the lives of maidens. The king of Ipoko is a great one king. You should concern yourself with the politics of the states or even the federation. And not with what happens in the lives of maidens. As far as I am concerned, the maids cannot do anything to bring down this kingdom. Now what brings down the kingdom is what the elders refuse to do. There is a lot that you need to learn. A country without a tradition is a dead country. Fernand, I don't know why you're asking me this question. Why not call the maid at the center of this controversy and ask her yourself? Eh? What's your name again? My name is Soini. Beautiful. Now you listen to me, Soini. I called you here because I think I can trust you. Okay, I need you to tell me exactly what you know. Gladys has been alleged of engaging in immoral acts. And I want you to tell me what you know. That is exactly what I'm saying. I don't know. Why not call Gladys? Ask her yourself. How am I supposed to know if she has engaged in any immoral act? I don't know. Does she sneak out at night? Sometimes. But that does not conclude the fact that she's doing that on immoral purpose. I see. Now, if you were asked this question, what would be your answer? Why would a maid sneak out of the palace at night? Why? Fernand, why are you putting me on the spot? In fact, I'm confused. I don't know why you're asking me all this question. Call Gladys. Ask her. She will be in a better position to answer. Stop putting words in my mouth. I have one question for you. A very direct question. <laughs> Is Gladys a virgin? How am I supposed to know that? Gladys is Gladys. Oinye is Oinye. I don't know. Moreover, Gladys knows that every maid that works in this palace of Ipoko Kingdom must be humble, chaste, and obedient. If not, she won't be working here in the first place. Call Gladys, ask her if she's a virgin. I don't know. Ah uh ah. -uh. Well, know that this meeting is a very confidential meeting. Okay, I don't need you to discuss it with anybody. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'll call you later. No And who could that be? Yeah, the door is open. Your Majesty, the Queen are bowing greetings. When are you ever going to court about this? Royal nonsense. I'm sorry, Your Majesty, I don't understand what you mean by royal nonsense. You know, when I look into your eyes, I do not see a god. I see a man that can quench the fire with me. So please, force yourself. Me. Your Majesty, I'm sorry, but you're the Queen of Iboko Kingdom, and I cannot call you by your name. <laughs> Do you realize that I dream of you every night? Be so upset if any god addresses me without respect. But I don't 
I see you as a God. I see you as a man. And I want you to see me as your woman. Um, Your Majesty, I'm sorry. I the 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 king has entrusted everything into my care, and and you are the only thing that he sees as very sacred. And it's impossible that I will see you see the woman in you, Your Majesty. Sorry, I can't sit on the same bed as the queen of my land. It's a taboo. Why don't you try to do less of tradition? And do more as a young man with fire. For Christ's sake, I'm telling you. Look, the king avoids me like a plague. Every passing day, I am roasting. I am dying. And you are that man that I want to quench my fire. I want you to see me more as a woman and I will change your life. Okay. Your, 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 your Majesty, I came to inform you about Gladys. Gladys, one of the maidens has lost her virginity and I want to relieve her of her duties so I came to get your permission <laughs> because I know if the king finds out he will give her as a punishment. <laughs> and why would you want to fire the poor girl simply because she lost the virginity? I'm sure she's old enough to have a boyfriend, isn't she? Yeah, Majesty, she, she bears your cup and, and that of the king. She, she, she's supposed to be a virgin. If, 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 if it happens that she, she, she gets deflowered, she, she, cannot, she can no longer perform that duty and we have to relieve her of it. You know, there's really nothing you would ask of me that I won't give to you. So, you just go. Do what you have to do and come back. I'll be waiting. All without the permission of the throne. I think I did the right thing. Besides, I have the permission of the queen. You know, I think I'm just avoiding her getting a harsher punishment from the king because I'm sure that's exactly what he would do. Many points. But don't you think we should you know, get her, force her to disclose who our partner in crime is? That's none of our business. It's not my concern. My only concern is to make sure I protect the cultural sanity of this palace. The girls or maids that bear the cup of the king are humble, chaste, and obedient. That's it, full stop. I'm sure I did the right thing. Yeah, you did. Be at your post. Are you aware that this is the throne room of the Boko Kingdom? 
where elders of our land meet on a weekly basis to take binding decisions on the affairs of the people. Why bring in um, bedroom matters here? Yeah. I am not talking to the throne, Your Majesty. I'm talking to my husband, the king. Oh, are you telling me that I can no longer talk to my husband? But of course you can talk to your husband. But there are certain things you cannot discuss before the throne. Things like, um, re reason why I have not touched you for a long time. And other trivial things like that. You know, it should be left for when I retire to bed. <laughs> mm, darling husband, when you retire to bed, you will sleep. What? As soon as you get into the bedroom, you just sleep and you do not wake up till the next morning. No, You no, have no. reduced the bedroom to a place where you only sleep. No, no, no. That is the reason why I decided to come to the throne room to see if I could get my husband to appreciate the beauty of the queen. But I have always admired the beauty of the queen. Well, why did I marry you? I married you because you are a beautiful woman. But my dear, you don't have to invade the throne room to know that I still appreciate your beauty. Mm. So, do you promise me that my husband is going to come to the room today and do what you're supposed to do as a husband? But I always do my duty as a husband. But if you insist that I must swear, then I swear. <laughs> Go to your room. Go to your room. Mm. Let the cabinet a member will, will see. Will you come here and hear what we are discussing? I will hold that promise as a debt. And if I do not see you this night in my room, if you do not come to do what you're supposed to do as a man, I promise you, I will come to your room and force you to do your duty as a man, darling husband. This night, Amozio, you're the only neighbor that I trust. Tell me what is happening. Ferdinand, your mother's condition is very critical. Oh my God. I suggest you come and see her. Please. She's alive, right? Yes, she is. Good. So where is she now? We took her to the clinic. But we have realized she's not responding to treatment at all. So um, I think you should come and see her before she dies. Okay. Please, I want you to do me this favor. Just stay with her and take care of her for me. Take care of it, please. I will, I, will, I will come this evening. I will. Thank you. I will try my best. But try and bring money while coming, okay? Please. Because your presence alone cannot solve the problem. Hmm? Okay. Just try your best to bring money. Okay. Eh? Right. Please. Your Majesty. I would have gone to the king, but this is the time that he's having his compulsory siesta, and I dare not disturb. That's why I came to you. I forbid you from ever going to my husband, the king, for any form of monetary assistance. If you need any of such assistance, you come to me. Now, and if I realize that for any reason you've gone to my husband for money, I will not take it lightly with you. Am I understood? Y yes, Your Majesty. Well, um, I, I need some money 
for my sick mother. I need to transfer her from one clinic to another one. I am doing this because you are the one man that I cherish so much. Even though you're still refusing me, I have already given my heart to you. Have it. Thank you, Your Majesty. Thank you. One more thing, Ferdinand. Yes, Your Majesty. I want you to make me a promise that you would do anything for me. Your, your, your Majesty, this is, 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 is a little beyond me because I'm sure there are some things I won't be able to do for you. Let me have my money back if you can't make the promise. Make sure you maintain the standard that we have in this palace. I'll be back when I'm through. All right. All right. I just hope he missed the poor woman alive. Mean what? What is your problem? Do you want his mother to die? No, no, no. I, I've been having this feeling, this terrible feeling that something bad might happen. And I mean, I don't want it. What is the problem? What exactly is happening? I have already prepared the papers. As I told you, the woman that brought her here, the best we can do is to take her to a specialist hospital where she will be properly diagnosed. As you can see, this place is just a med clinic and we don't have the facilities to handle her. So why is nobody telling me something? She's just lying as if she's going to die. What is happening? What is the problem? One have reason to believe that she drank a concussion that is not good for her. You know all this unscientific herbal formula that is being circulated everywhere. She took it and thing is not good for her, so it's affected her liver. So this morning and uh, she's finding it difficult to breathe. Doctor, are you saying my mother is going to die? I didn't say so. I cannot even say so because her case can be handled. Just take her to the specialist hospital like earlier recommended. They can continue from where we stop. You know, they have all the facilities to handle our case. I was the one that told you I was suspecting her. I expected you to have called me, discussed with me, before firing her. Did she tell you that I was the one who fired her? Oh no, is it the win? Because I know it's only two of you that have the power to hire and fire in this palace. Madhu. You are wrong. The chief of palace guards has the powers to hire and fire. 
And as a matter of fact, he was the one who fired the promiscuous maiden. Your Highness, the head of the palace guards has only power to fire when it borders on incompetence. But that's not the issue here. The issue here borders on immorality. A maiden of this kingdom who bears the royal cup was found to have abused her body. I mean, she deserved something more than just being fired. Your Highness, immorality is a serious crime in Iboko land. You know it too well. So, anybody found to have abused her body or committed immorality should have been sanctioned in a right way. Now, you have not mentioned anything about the man or men who defiled the maiden. They ought to know that any maiden who bears the cup of the king must not be romanced by anybody. Our primary concern should not be on the man or man. It is possible she may have opened herself up to men from other kingdoms. Which you, your highness, cannot do anything about. I suggest you call her back to this kingdom and banish her. In fact, as I was coming to this palace, I saw her. She shouldn't be in this kingdom at all, Your Highness. Madhu, I'll repeat. The chief of palace guards has the powers to take disciplinary action against a guard or a maiden. He has fired the promiscuous maiden and it is a decision that I believe we must allow to stand. What I'm asking you to do is not difficult. Just get into bed and massage my bare body. And I'll give you money to take care of your sick mother. Her Majesty, why do you want to set me up against the gods? Nobody is supposed to touch the Queen's body. That's only when you do that without the consent of the Queen. Or without a reason. That is not the case here. Besides, you're going to be in so much trouble if you refuse me. I can argue that you flaunted my orders. Your Majesty, I can, I can, I can go to the throne and, and, and tell the king that you need his presence immediately. And he will be here to massage your back. I do not need the king to massage my back, Ferdinand. Besides, he can't even do it. I, I, don't, I, I don't know how to do it myself, Your Majesty. I've never done it before. And I'll blood you my body. Come and experience the signs of massage. Your fingers are quite sexy. And I know that they will do extremely exciting things to my body. So get into bed. Why me? Why am I the one? Because I find you irresistible. I don't want to imagine life without you. Your Majesty, you are the Queen. I know that. But before I became a Queen, I was originally an active woman. This royal marriage shit just Hazed me completely. You know, you are the only hope I see around. Just do what I've asked you to do and I will give you all the protection that you ever needed. I'm already under the protection of the king. Lee, stop talking like a child. Besides, Your mother's health should be your concern, if I were you. Do what you have to do and get rich.
perdido. Is she dead? Does it mean you are not bothered with your mother's health? Of course I am bothered. I spoke to the doctor and he said I need to transfer her to a specialist hospital because then, they haven't got all the facilities. Then why are you back in the palace without moving her? If I have to transfer her, I need money. And that's why I'm here to raise the money. Ferdinand, let me tell you something. If you allow your mother to die, her blood would be on you. Why are you cursing me? Why are you putting a curse on me? As if I'm just relaxed and I'm not doing anything about it. I'm trying to raise the money. Ferdinand, go to the king. Ask him for money. You are the head guard. Your mother cannot die when you are the head guard in that palace. Mama you don't understand. Understand what? Understand what, Ferdinand? Are you telling me that the king of Iboko Kingdom is now too broke that he cannot give you money to take your mother to the best hospital in town? Is that what you're telling me? There is an administrative restructuring going on. And nobody's allowed to go to the king directly with their problems. It's not allowed. Then you go to the queen. You are the head guard in that palace. And your problems must be seen as royal problem. Fine. Fair enough. Can you just speak to the doctor for me? Speak to him tonight that he should just take care of my mother. And I'll come in tomorrow and, 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 and pay the money. Please. Pregnant. The head guard. Come in, Freddy. Your, your, your Majesty. I'm not supposed to see you like this. Come and sit down here and say that to my face. I'd like for us to talk eyeball to eyeball. Your Majesty, it 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 it, 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 it might not be anything in, in another kingdom if another person sees the queen body apart from the king. But here in Iboko's kingdom is a huge abomination. And, and, and it, I know the consequences. It can bring down the whole kingdom. Could you please spare me this mumbo jumbo about your archaic tradition and talk like someone who's living in a new world? Besides, I am the queen. You do not concern yourself with what I want. Yes, yes, Your Majesty. I'm concerned with what you what what what, what you want. But Majesty, this this, this is this is this, this this is different. Look, I just want you. So connected. It's not going to take long. Look, I just I just want you to grab me and make me feel like a woman. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. What worries my chief of palace guards? I understand uh, you sat on the throne all through the night. Your Majesty, it concerns my mother. Your mother? Uh, what is the matter with your mother? Your Majesty. And what would the king be discussing with a hard-working head guard? Ah, 
my dear. I was told that he was awake all night. Oh. And uh, when I asked him why, he says uh, it has to do with his mother. Oh, his mother? Mm. And why would you discuss issues concerning your mother with the king? While I'm still the queen mother of this land, I handle all the female affairs. I agree with you, your majesty, the queen. But... There are no buts. I forbid you from ever discussing anything that has to do with women with the king. He has lots of headache dealing with land boundaries. He has so much headache dealing with masquerades. He has a lot of headache dealing with the administration of this kingdom that has so many problems. And yet you want to burden him with more problems about your mother while I'm still the queen mother of this land. Come with me. And I will sort out every problem that has to do with your mother. She is quite right, actually. You know, she is empowered by tradition to oversee a women's affairs. I'll go with her, I'll go with her. She will handle your case very well. Excuse me, my darling. Why is the machine off? Eh? Why? Pregnant. Eh? Are you actually telling me you came here without money? Eh? What kind of son are you, sir? I'm trying to find the money. I'm trying to find the money. <gasps> just, just bear with me a little more, please. Okay, I beg you. There are a lot of things happening. You don't understand what Listen, is happening. See, I'm leaving you here to face your problems. What? Honestly speaking, Pregnant. I've done my best in bringing her to this new hospital. I've exhausted all the money I saved. And you know it. So I'm leaving. You have to take it off from here. I'm leaving. Mama was your man. Please. Thank you. I'm already indebted to you. And I will forever be grateful for all your assistance. I'm making you just a little more. How long are you going to continue with this same story, Fedna? This woman here is your mother. She is not my mother. I'm only assisting you because I know your father was a good man when he was alive. I'm trying to get this money. I know everything you've been doing for me. You've been doing a lot of things for me, a lot of sacrifices you've been making. You brought my mother here. You've been taking care of her, I understand. I beg you, just, just hold on a little more for me, please. Contributed this token. Please manage it. I appreciate it, but I I can't take the envelope. Fernand, are you going to reject what we contributed enough to assist your sick mother? What is in that envelope is not up to twenty thousand naira. 
by me. But at least it will go a long way. Eh, just add it to manage it. It's better than nothing. Will you listen to me? I appreciate everything that you guys have done for me, okay? I, I understand and I'm very happy that you've been able to remember me in my times of trouble. Please tell the maids and the guards involved that I'm very happy and I will forever be grateful. But I cannot accept the envelope. I'm sorry. Just keep the little that you have. Don't worry about me, I'll be fine. I'll, I'll solve the problem. Many people blame doctors for always asking for payment before treatments are made. And some have erroneously concluded that doctors are heartless. The truth, however, is that doctors are tired of endless excuses from people whom they treated. I am sorry, this hospital cannot continue with the treatment until the payment of 80000 is made. Huh? And if anything happens, this hospital cannot be blamed. Hey! Hey! Mom, mm -hmm. how did you manage to get the money? Mm -hmm. Baby, where I got the money from is not important. Hmm? Look, what is important now is that you are okay. Hmm? I know you don't have money, but where did you get the money? Huh? Ferdinand. <sighs> okay, all right. Now that you insist, I will tell you. I sold everything. Everything. See, I sold my jewelry. I sold my wrappers. I sold everything that we have to be able to raise the money. But I want to tell you that all those things don't matter. What is important and precious to me is your life. And besides, I know that when you grow up, you will replace all these things for me. Hmm? Don't worry. I appreciate you, but I'd rather die than to see you suffer. I'll never let you suffer in my life. Hey! Don't say that, my baby. You are not going to die. You will not die. I'm your mother. I will die in your place. I am always willing to die for you. Hmm? Look, forget about all this death talk. The important thing is that you are well. Your body is good. God is faithful. Hey, God, I thank you so much. You answer prayers. See, my son, he's well. Oh, God, I thank you. Very soon you go home, eh? Yes, That's my boy. I'm only doing this because I want to save my mother. You would have fun. It's an abomination.
Where is Ferdinand? Ferdinand? He should be somewhere in the compound. He's around. The king will never hear this one. This is one secret we will take to our graves. Can I get my money? What's the hurry? Hmm? It's very late in the night. There is no way I'm letting you walk out of here now. I'll give you your money in the morning. Well, good night. <laughs> when do you think you are going? Going to my room. Uh, you are not leaving this place. You're sleeping here tonight. You must be out of your mind. Aha. Uh -huh. I like the way you just addressed me. You know, it just shows that you don't see me as your woman. That you can order around. I like it. Majesty, I'm sorry. God forbid if I order you around. But I don't know. I'm not sleeping here. Look. I know you are afraid of the king. But don't worry. He is not coming. Besides, even if he happens to stop by, the door is locked. So there is nothing for you to worry about. Of course you don't expect me to let you out of my sight after, after what you did to me, do you? Mm -hmm. This is the money. I want you to assemble the specialist to start the high-tech treatment of my mother. I don't want to lose her. I'm sorry, young woman. You lost her. On behalf of the management of the hospital, I wish to express our Heartfelt uh, condolence. The money rather came too late. Once again, I am sorry. Using my advances. Go to the throne and do something useful for the kingdom. What do you mean, do something useful? Are you the one who's been telling me what to do as a king? Look, I'm sorry, king, if you're upset. I did not mean to upset you, but I'm just not in the mood. What has come over you? Do you realize it's an abomination for the queen to resist the king? Well, my king, I'm sorry. 
like I said earlier. I am your wife, all right? And you have the right to come to me when you want. But I'm not just that kind of queen that you can cajole with your baseless traditions. I am your wife. And you can talk to me. But that's only if we are both in the mood. <laughs> I, I can put you in the mood and get you ready. But... <sighs> you know what you'll do for me, my king? Go to your room and wait for me. I'll meet you shortly. You want me to go to my room and wait for you? Why do you sound like that? Why are you returning the money? You didn't give the money to me when I needed the money. My mother is dead. Oh my god. Oh my god. No. No. not sure. I have this feeling that what I dreamt has happened. Come, are you trying to tell me that he finally lost his mother? I'm not sure. 
But don't quote me anywhere. But I have this terrible feeling that all is not well. Hi. Too bad. Too bad. I'm not holding breath for him. But he was deeply troubled. You can't blame the poor boy for the death of his mother. The news everywhere is that she died because money was not provided in time. Mm -hmm. He should have collected what we gave to him. At least would have helped him a little. He would have managed it. What we gave to him was nothing compared to what was required. Is it that change that we gave to him that you would have used? My major problem is why the king did not give him the money when he required it. I mean, long live your majesty the queen. Long live your majesty. I once heard the head guard caution against involving in idle gossips. Why are you two still involved in such an unacceptable act? I'm sorry, Your Majesty, but we're not involved in gossip. Yes, Your Majesty, we are not gossiping. Because see my aunt Pete, put him down. Hey, why are you always scared? Did you gossip? Eh? Hey, go and look for something to do. I, I will see you later, eh? I know you miss your mom very much. But I'll be there for you. Be a mother to you the best way I can. You know, it's bad enough we didn't get to meet each other, each other on time. But at least we have ourselves to ourselves. I love you. I love you very much. and think of a way forward. Uh, yes, Your Highness. That's more the reason why we are here. You know, this great kingdom is brought down on her knees. And we can't all sit and pretend as if all is well. Chief, I, I agree with you. The kingdom is down on her knees and we have to do something. But the question begging for an answer is, what do we do? Your Highness, I must stand on my feet. I am convinced that decisive situation needs decisive action. Okay. All we have to do is to call the chief priest and give him some money to appease the gods. Because the gods are angry with us. And that is why nothing is working. Well, Chief, I am, I'm, I'm afraid I disagree with you. The gods cannot be angry with us. Because we have not done anything to provoke the anger of the gods. Your Highness, what then do we do? What do we do? Our children are coming back in hordes from all over the country, telling of the same experience of downfall in their business. Go round the kingdom, Your Highness, and verify what I'm going to tell you now. In the past six months, not even one girl has been married in this kingdom. Not one. Your Highness, farmers and traders are complaining of the same thing. Bad business. Downfall in productivity. 
the truth, Your Highness, if it must be told, is that calamity has been unleashed on this kingdom. And therefore, I think we have to ask the chief priest to do what he has to do. Simple. Majesty, I have Kula. Ukadika, I am not here for Kula. What is going on? You refuse to go into the shrine with me and you are refusing to eat Kula in my house. To what do I owe this visit, Your Majesty? It's been established that without you, my husband is useless in this kingdom. Are you telling me you came all the way from the palace just to educate me on my status as the seer of this kingdom? Not really. I was in a dream. I saw you in that dream. You were trying to reach out to me to do you a favor. But the unfortunate thing was that I wasn't able to give you that favor before I woke up. So I am here now to ask you what your problem is. What can I do to help you? The only problem I now have borders on a woman. I am very surprised that a woman has emerged before me expressing willingness to solve this problem. I am surprised. I am not just a woman. I am not an ordinary woman. I am the queen of this land. I am here in that capacity. So, what would you like the queen to do for you? I have a woman of Umu Banzam that I want to marry. I have finalized every single negotiation concerning that marriage. As we speak now, Men of Umo Banzam are waiting for me to come forward. I have not managed to go to Uza because I don't have money. Let me say it mildly, Your Majesty. Money is my problem. Money? <laughs> money, money, money. How much are we talking about here? <laughs> To marry a woman of Umo Banzam, if I must tell you, is the cheapest around here. Men of Umo Banzam are not greedy, they don't demand so much money. If I have 20,000 naira with me, I will proceed to Umo Banzam. And that very beautiful woman will be living in my house with me as my wife. I will give you 100,000 naira. So you proceed with your marriage right. But then you will have to make me a promise. Your Majesty, 100,000 Naira is enough to extract more than one promise from me. What do you want me to promise you? Very soon, men of this land will come asking questions. I want you to tell them that you see nothing. <laughs> Your Majesty, I can see. I am seeing the bed upon which this calamity was fermented. <laughs> I see it clearly. But money answered all things. If I have the money you promised, <laughs> consider my lips sealed. Thank you. You're welcome.
Chief Madam, I'm sorry for what I'm going to tell you. I have a feeling that the king has a hand in the problems in this land. Don't you think it is a weighty statement? Well, it is wrong to accuse the king, you know. You may think of it anyhow or call it what you like. If he has no hand in it, he should have risen like a king and find solutions to the problems. Okay, okay. The king is only the head of the council. And so? He is not like a headmaster in a village school. I agree. Trying to flog little children to conform. Mm -hmm. All of us are members of the council. So we must get involved to find a solution to the problem. Very good. I think I like your suggestion now. And that is why we have to articulate what we are going to tell the king here and now. A maiden who bears the cup of the king must be humble, mm -hmm. chaste, mm -hmm. and obedient at all times. You are very, very correct. But what has that got to do with what we are talking about? A maiden who lost her virginity once bore the cup of the king. Eh? That's very serious. Who told you that kind of thing? I am telling you what I saw with my two very naked eyes. I once saw her standing loose with strange men in an ungodly hour in the bush. Uh -uh. I reported to the king. And they later confirmed that she compromised her body. That's sacrilege. A defied maiden should never, ever bear the cup of the king. Never. She should be banished. Okay, okay. You are the son of your father. That sacrilege happened in this very kingdom. And nobody punished her. I reported to the king, rather than banish her, they sacked her. And I want to tell you, without fear of equivocation, that that is the bane of the problem we have been having in this uh, community. Of course it is. Hey, Chief Mad. She shouted in a loud voice. Some few neighbors ran in. She showed them the dead goods. They showed concern and they consoled her. Then, on getting to, to their houses, they noticed that that same night, their goods, their fowls, even their tolo tolo, died that same night. You mean that? <laughs> that is strange. But. How do we reconcile all these evils? My brother, I must tell you the truth. There is an evil wind that's blowing across this land. And this evil wind, if care is not taken, it will destroy our kingdom. Because our elders, they don't ask questions at all. They don't! Where is the head guard? We don't know his exact location, but he should be somewhere in the palace. Look for him. Tell him I'm back. He should bring what I asked him to get for me. Yes, Your Majesty. Give you a hundred thousand naira. So you proceed with your marriage right. 
this is magical it's very magical the gap between the gift and the request is too close for comfort it's too close for comfort are you not confusing me what is the gift and what request are you talking about is she okay okay are you here in your individual capacity as is she okay okay or were you sent by some people? I'm sure you are not a stranger in this kingdom. I am the seer. And you are the seer, of course. You can be a stranger. You see, many things have turned upside down. And people are asking questions. You have not managed to ask them a question with that topic you just said, is your peke. Too many people are always asking too many questions. And no Kadike this year of this land cannot continue to answer useless, baseless questions. <laughs> oh, Kadike. <laughs> Alright. I am here making a serious inquiry. It all concerns our kingdom. The place we hold dear. Yes. Are you here on your own? Or were you sent by some people? Ah. I'm here on my own. If you are here on your own. That is the end of this meeting. Huh? I am not going to speak to an individual. I must speak to all. To all. I met one of the guards and he said you were looking for me, that I should bring the thing that you asked me to buy for you, but I don't remember you asking me to get anything. When we are out to keep secrets, or talk in strange words and strange languages. I just used that to confuse the guard. Because I wanted you here. And now you're here, I'm happy. Okay, so I can go now. Not so fast. What is it with the attitude? Oh, is it because of that rubbish the elders were talking about? Oh, please. Ignore them. If you reassure me of your love for me, I will let you go. We can't continue to do this. We just can't. I mean, this palace would have been a beautiful place to live. If only you showed the king the same affection you show me. What, 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 why, why are you doing this? Because I do not love your so-called king. I would have been long gone from this palace if I hadn't met someone like you. Look, you are the only reason why I am still here. So why did you marry the king if you don't love him? Like you don't know that I'm never going to be able to mother the future king? Yes, I do. I know that. That the late queen had three sons. And one of them will surely succeed him as king. What is your point? I am not trusted. That is why the king sent them overseas. If I have any child in this palace, it's just going to amount to nothing. And of course, that's the last thing I wish to do. It is you I want to reproduce for. God forbid. Why would we want to do something like that? I mean, even if you did get pregnant and had a child for me, I can't claim it because you're married to the king. But at least in our hearts, we would both know that the child belongs to us. Can't you see it? Helen. We can't continue like this. Just consider that whatever we have shared was a mistake. Leave me alone and concentrate on your husband, please.
Mr. Ose, the problem in this land has been traced to your daughter. First, she was no longer a virgin when she bought the cup of the king. Are you aware? It was an abomination. A clear abomination. And that abomination has not been cleansed from the land. And that is the root of the calamity we have been experiencing in this land. Have you finished? What type of nonsense question is that? I am telling you something and you're asking me if I have finished. Are you not ashamed, Mr. Ose, that your daughter's misbehavior has caused this kingdom a lot of calamity? Now, listen and listen good. That I'm a quiet man does not mean that I'm not as dangerous as other men when provoked. Your nonsense throne fired my daughter for nothing. And those of you that parade yourself as the members of the ruling class has to go and trace the roots of the problem in the land. It has nothing and absolutely nothing to do with my daughter. And now who told you that your daughter was fired for nothing? The allegation against her was that she lost her virginity and was still behind the cup of the king. Mr. Ose, it was not an allegation. They confirmed it. Who? Who confirmed it? You're asking me who? Was it not your daughter that I saw in the night meandering with men in the bush? Is it not your daughter? You accused my daughter of losing her virginity and fired her from the palace. Gladys, my daughter, has finally married and her husband has returned to me with the members of his family to thank me for giving him a virgin. The virgin? <laughs> Now tell me, Chief Madu, can a man bring a goat to offer to Akwan if his wife was not a virgin? Do you mean the man actually offered goat to Akwan? Chief Madu, look at me very, very well. Do I look like an imbecile that speaks and saliva coming out of his mouth? The man found his wife a virgin and made a ghost sacrifice to Akwale. That was the same woman that was accused losing her virginity and was fired unjustly from the palace. Your counsel has to go and trace the roots of the problem. It has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with my daughter. When are we going to stop? What? Well, this is so wrong. And I'm not happy. You have the queen at your beck and call. That should be your concern. Don't you understand? Don't you just get it? The whole land is going to descend on me. When they see that I am sleeping with you, they're going to see me as an evil god. It's all an abomination. I, yes, we've already done it. But we can correct it by stopping now. Why are you always talking about being caught? You can't be caught because she play right inside my bedroom. I'm going to change your life for good. I just want you to have it at the back of your head that we were made for each other. It has been long since a man of Iboko Kingdom visited me. And I'm not comfortable with this visit of yours. Because men of your land don't always come with good tidings. Amobi. Ichi. I am here in my capacity as a traditional prime minister of Iboko land. Mm -hmm. I come to make inquiries. Mm -hmm. I know you to be a man of wisdoms and tradition. Mm -hmm. And I realize you know the implication of my visit. Iche, I'm all ears. In our land, Iboko, things are no longer at ease. Mm -hmm. We have come to the conclusion that the gods must have risen against us. That problem was traceable to the woman your younger brother married from our land. 
to understand it. How would my brother's wife be the origin of the crisis in the Boko Kingdom? I was just coming from your in-law, Hussein. Mm -hmm. And they confirmed to me that your brother made good sacrifice to Akwali. Is that what you regard as the origin of your crisis? I was the one who asked my brother to take the goat to his in-law. And that is when he entered the woman and he realized that she was a virgin. Sacrifice meant to Akwali, the great god of fertility, cannot be the genesis of your crisis. Amobi. Mm, Ichi. Can your brother swear before the graves of your ancestors eh? that Gladys was a virgin that very night he entered her? Ichi, I don't know why you suggest that my brother will swear. Hmm. What I can tell you is that my brother married a virgin from Iboko Kingdom and we made Thanksgiving sacrifice. I suggest that you make more effort to find the very cause of your problems. Eh? Don't, don't trace it to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you come to the conclusion that Gladys was no longer a virgin? I don't understand the question. You use your power as the head of the palace guards in firing her after realizing she was no longer a virgin and was still bearing the royal cup. Oh yes, that's correct. All right, I now want to know the yardstick between which you use in your discovery. Did you enter her or were you relying on what people said? But Chief, there is a saying in this kingdom that silence is acceptance. I asked her over and over again if she was still a virgin and she refused to talk. She wouldn't speak. So I concluded that she's no longer a virgin. And I put it to you that that bad judgment of yours is the cause of all the problems we have in this kingdom. Chief, Chief, please wait. What do you mean by bad judgment? You fired her unjustly and she left this palace a virgin. Sorry, um, Chief Madu, please, how do you know? As soon as she left this palace, she got married. And her husband discovered she is still a virgin. They have offered good sacrifice to Akwale, the god of fertility. Akwale is now against us. Oh well, we will still solve that problem. Bet I'm holding you responsible. and tell me that you have been doing your work as chief of palace guards? Yes, your majesty. As head of the guards of this palace, I've been doing my duties. Mm. 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 I have a reason to believe that the queen is practicing lesbianism with a maiden or all of them. Your Majesty, that's not possible. That is why I have sent for you. You are the only one I can trust. I want to set up the machinery in motion. 
I wanted to find out if any of the maidens has been going into the Queen's room and staying there. Yes, Your Majesty, I will find out. But, Your Majesty, is there a reason why you think the Queen is practicing such an abominable act? Ah, ah, my son. <laughs> when a woman is not ready for her husband, then she must be getting satisfaction from somewhere else. Now I know that none of the guards will have the time to approach her. But the maidens. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, Your Majesty. So I want you to find out exactly what is happening so that I can do what I want to do. Yes, Your Majesty. I will, I will find out, Your Majesty. Thank you, Your Majesty. Yes. Must you always guess? Does it mean you don't know why I'm here? Why are elders of Iboko coming to me one after the other? I already said it clearly. That I am not going to speak to an individual. Okay, okay. I hope you are not planning to dismiss me without saying a word. I am here in my capacity as the traditional Prime Minister of Iboko Land here. And I order you to speak. Order. What do you want to hear? There was this girl named Gladys. She is the daughter of uh, Ose, of our uncle village. Uh, she was sacked from the palace when it was discovered she lost her virginity. So I am here to find out from you if she was actually a virgin before she was sacked. The last time she bore the cup of the king, she was a virgin. Yeah. Oh, Kadiki, must you always confuse people who come to you as a seer? That the girl was sacked from the palace because she lost her virginity. I come to you to find out if the sack was valid or not. There is only one reason why you are running from pillar to post, Shifumadu. Asking questions on virginity and sack. And that is because you are the traditional Prime Minister of this kingdom and you are concerned with the crisis and the confusion we now face in this land. What I am telling you as you are looking at me, Chief Omadu, is that I see clearly the bed upon which this abomination was perfected. I am talking of this abomination, this very abomination that is holding this kingdom down now. I see the bed upon which it was perfected. And this bed, well-crafted bed, is fixed inside a beautiful house. Are you telling me that she lost her virginity on a very good bed? Shifumadu, we do not have anything to do with virginity. Nothing at all. The girl you mentioned, the maiden, the so-called Gladys, is now married to a man of another land. And this new day that breaks, she comes up with wonderful qualities that make her neighbors humble and somewhat jealous. The problem we have in this kingdom is within. And men of the ruling class, your humble self inclusive, must rise up and deal with strange bed pillows. Strange bed pillows. What does that mean? Chief Umaru, I am not going to speak anything further on this very subject. But as we leave, this very shrine today, I want you to live with this word. The sickness that ultimately killed the elephant started from the stomach. Started from the stomach. Thank you. 
My dear, you are the queen of this kingdom and you cannot say that you are not part of the politics of this kingdom. Which is why I called you to, to know what you think about all these problems we're having. Well, I... Okadike is the only seer we have in this kingdom. Yes. So, I think the way forward is to call him or, if possible, invite him over to tell us what he sees. Mm. Mm. Ah. Ah. Your Highness, My, My Majesty. Um, the Queen has just made a suggestion and I think we should consider it. You should get Ukadike to come and tell us what is going on. Your Highness, I am just coming from Ukadike. Yes. Ukadike said the virgin is not our problem. Really? Uh, in fact, I now know that Akwali is not our problem. Yes. Ukadike said that the problem that is ravaging this kingdom uh, was perfected on a very good bed. Yes, and that bed was positioned in a good house. Uh, he said that the problem is with him. And those of us in the ruling class must deal with strange bed fellows. Uh, oh, really? He, he said that? Uh, wait, w w what exactly does he mean by strange bed fellows? Exactly. Uh, in fact, Okadike did not explain further. He said that what killed an elephant started from the stomach. What killed an elephant started from the stomach? Uh, you must call Okadike to come and explain what he means. Men of ruling class must deal with strange made fellows. Exactly. Yeah, it's rather strange, right? Your Majesty was only a of the problem. I didn't mention the problem in specifics. And it remains impossible for men to understand me when I refuse to speak in black and white. Do you want more money? Your Majesty, I am a seer domiciled in Iboko Kingdom. I don't have any other business. My only business is to look men into their faces and tell them what they do not see. I wouldn't know the reason why Her Majesty is asking me if I need more money. Because I expect you to know that I always need money. Then, I will give you money. Henceforth, I do not want you to speak any further to anyone about this. Even the trash you called a glimmer of the problem was enough to get me jumpy. Just don't let it happen again. 
But wait a minute. Are you telling me that they understood what I said? When you said something happened on a good bed, in a good house, what were you expecting? Of course they could read through the lines. I just want you to keep short. Am I understood? When I have the money, then you can consider yourself understood. Money. If you think the gods have not written against us, then let us get another seer to come before our king. You see, as I'm talking to you right now, there is no livestock anywhere in Iboko Kingdom. None! An evil wind has blown them away. I have gone to Okadike, and the man is talking something relatively unclear to me. I'm not talking about Okadike. I went to him, he refused to speak to me. Let us get another seer. The kingdom is gradually being destroyed. And we cannot sit and fold our arms. No! Do you think it is right to get another seer to stand before our king? <laughs> Chief Mado, <laughs> a seer is a seer. No matter where he comes from. You see, Okadike is holding the entire kingdom to ransom. He sees himself as our only hope. I, I believe in surprise attack. Let us surprise him. Okay, okay. Incidentally, both of us cannot sit here and take decision on this matter. The king is the ultimate decision taker. We cannot go contrary to his decision. Eh? Okadike is still our seer. We must compel him to do his job. I agree. But what I'm saying is simple. If he refuses to do his work, let us invite another seer. That's all I'm saying. The king is suspecting you of practicing lesbianism. <laughs> no, wait. You're not serious. I'm telling you what is happening. He invited me to his throne in order that I investigate and find out who the very maiden is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, now this man is the biggest clown of the year. Okay, what does he think I am? Some classless lady who would stoop so low to sleep with a maid? You know what, you're the one causing all this problem. Really? Yes. How? Your constant refusal of allowing the king to touch you. And now he's beginning to suspect everyone. He has a reason to believe that you're getting your sexual satisfaction from somewhere else. Funny thing, he's not suspecting any of the gods, but the maidens. So, what are you going to tell him? I'm not telling him anything. I just want you to go to his room and give him what he wants, period. That's not possible. That man is old. Besides, I am not interested in whatever he has to offer. Now you listen to me, Helen. This is not right. He's your husband and he is the king. If you continue doing this, he will trace your source of sexual satisfaction. And I don't want any trouble. Listen, you are not going to be in any trouble. Forget to Guinea and his antics. What? You think I married him for sex? Hell no. Of course I knew that he would definitely have nothing to offer any woman in bed. 
I I married him for his wealth. And now I am in charge of everything. You see, I always knew I was going to get you into my bed. And now that I have you where I always wanted, I'm happy. That's all that matters. Listen, I'm about to do something that I don't want to do. But I have to. I'm giving you an ultimatum. To go to the king's room and give him what he wants. I'm never going to come to this room again to have anything to do with you. So leave this minute. <laughs> okay, now, is this a threat or something? Whatever. <laughs> you know the only good thing about this, your empty threat, is that you no longer address me as the queen. He now will address me as your woman that you can push around the way you like, talk to the way you like. And for some very funny reasons, I like it. I will do what you've asked me to do. It's definitely going to be for the last time. For me this early. I hope there's no problem. Yes, I actually sent for you because I believe you know everything that happens in the palace. To an extent, yes, not in all cases. Onye, I was in a dream where we all gathered for Ferdinand's wedding. It was a big occasion. Then the time came when he was asked to uncover his bride. Then he opened the veil, and the whole crowd was shocked. Why? His bride turned out to be Her Majesty, the Queen of Iboko Kingdom. I woke up. It was a dream. Dream? <laughs> that is a bad dream. A man getting close to the Queen while the King is still alive. I wonder. That is not good at all. I wonder. But. To the best of your knowledge, is he any close to Her Majesty? Well, I cannot say yes or no. I'm persuaded to know that Ferdinand will not make the mistake of getting close to the Queen while the King is still alive. He of all people should know that. Mova is a dedicated guard. He will try it. Onye, we have to be very sure. Because the way people reacted, when they discovered he was getting married to Her Majesty, was spontaneous. They were even rushing to mob him, and I woke up. It remains a taboo in this place for any man born of a woman to get close to the queen while the king is alive. Fernand of all people, for that matter, cannot do that. You told Chief Mother that the sickness that ultimately killed the elephant was from the stomach. Now, could you please tell us the meaning of that statement? Your Majesty, this thing must never be allowed to be reported outside this kingdom. That men of the ruling class of Iboko land do not understand simple proverbs anymore. Eh? Ukadike, we are no longer talking about proverbs. We want you to do your work as a seer in this kingdom. Look, calamities, poverty, 
sickness have engulfed the entire kingdom. Everything is at a standstill. And that's why we are asking you to tell us the way forward. Your Majesty, I can tell you that what we face in this kingdom has nothing whatsoever to do with the gods, traditions, customs, whatever. Global economy is facing a recession. And that is what we face in this land. I don't even know where we are complaining. Chai! Okadike, you are a pathological liar. Were you not the one who told me that the problem is within and that men of ruling class must deal with strange bedfellows? I don't know why you are now talking about recession, recession, and the economy and everything. When I spoke to Shifumado in my shrine, I spoke. Aso Kadike, a man of Ibuko Kingdom. But now that I have found myself under the intimidating presence of His Majesty, King Ogene of Ibuko Land, I am speaking as the seer of this kingdom. And I want to believe strongly, Your Majesty, that the men of the ruling class would be able to understand the difference between the two scenarios. When you spoke to Chief Madu, what you told him sounded like what a seer would say. But what you are saying here sounds like what any ordinary man would say. Therefore, I must insist that you speak. And we would like you to tell us the meaning of strange bedfellows. Majesty, I, I, I am I am seeing things, but they are not clear at all. The only thing that I can see clearly, Your Majesty, is that global economy is bad. Not only in this kingdom, it's everywhere. Every economy is very bad. Your Majesty, you can even look. You will see all the economy looking very stupid and miserable. It's very clear. I don't know if you can just look small. Oh. Your Highness, what a seer. He's so unbelievable. Oye, what is your problem? Why would you base your conclusion on a dream? A mere dream that anybody can dream? Why are you saying I concluded? If I've concluded, so why, what am I doing here? Why am I asking you this? I'm only here to verify because I'm concerned. But let me ask you, do you have anything to do with the queen? Why would you ask me that question? Why would you ask me that stupid question? Huh? Am I not from this kingdom? Don't I know the laws of this kingdom? Don't I? Why in the world would I have anything to do with the Queen? Watch yourself. So you're saying what she had was just a mere dream, no foundation. Exactly. No meaning. Is that not Okadiki? The seer? So? What's he doing in the palace? What is wrong with the seer coming into the palace to see the king? Is there something wrong with it? Huh? Look, find something profitable to do and stop all the suspicion you're doing here. I'm not suspecting what is in the palace. Watch yourself, oh. 
I stand on my feet before this council because I am persuaded in my heart that this council is about to make a terrible, terrible mistake. I am the queen of this land and I will not, cannot allow this council to make a mistake that could have easily been avoided. I'm sorry to cut you short, Your Majesty, the queen. You need to be told that we don't have all the time in the world to discuss this. So, what mistakes are you trying to avoid? Thank you. Okadike is a seer of this land. He has been the one guiding this council and it has never, ever in the history of this great kingdom be reported that he's been incompetent. So why would this council walk him out? And why are we looking for another seer? Good. Your Majesty, King Ogene of Iboko land, I greet you. Kindly tell the Queen that women have no place in this council. Ichi, okay, okay. Well, I allowed her into these uh, hollow chambers um, because of the crisis that has befallen the kingdom. And we need every suggestion, every idea we can master or get. And I insist that the only solution to the problem is for us to travel to Ogbe to call the Asiya. That is all. Okay, okay. Why Ogbe? What is your interest? Are there no other seers you could call? We are faced with a decisive problem. And that problem has to be solved with a decisive action. Okadike is entirely out of it. Entirely. And any other seers that have had something to do with him. We must travel to Okwe immediately. And that now. Bam! is already in crisis. I mean, the last thing we need is another crisis within the palace. You sat there. You watched. You listened to Okeke insult me. And what did you do? Nothing. I want you to explain that to me. Oh, my dear. You sound as if you don't know Ichi Okeke. He's a radical. He has taken after his father. He doesn't take no for an answer. Oh, Chief, that is what we must force him to take this time. For Christ's sake, he's nothing but a busybody. How, how would you allow him to hijack the council? Ah, my dear. No, I disagree with you there. He has not hijacked the council, and he can never hijack the council. He, he was only speaking his mind. Mm -hmm. Speaking his mind. And so what happened at the end? The elders were forced to accept the stupid thing that came out of his mouth in the name of speaking his mind. My husband, there's something I want you to understand. We have a seer, and that is Okadike. And he remains our seer. What you are asking is nine impossible. As we are talking now, elders of our land are on their way to Okwe to fetch the seer. Stop them! Call them! Send the guards! Or better still, just call them on their telephone numbers. We cannot do that. I mean, 
We should learn to appreciate what we have. This is going to be tough. You are the king of Iboko Kingdom. You can't be ordered around by a mere riffraff like Okeke. We have a seer. And he remains our seer. My darling husband. Mm. You can do it. Mm. Please. Mm. All right. I like what I'm doing. And I can assure you, I don't have time for all this kind of rubbish. Somebody just told me about a dream and I don't like it. It's a difficult one, please. I want us to talk about that dream. Come now. Don't give me any more excuses. The Queen has spoken. Yeah. Okay, I'm coming. I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. Ezemu, ah, I must confess, this visit is indeed a surprise. The only woman in this kingdom that can force you to counter the decision of the ruling class was your late wife. This is because she bore the future king. A woman that has not considered it necessary to have a child for the king cannot force you to counter the valid decision of the council. Ezebon, please wait. Are you saying that the elders of our land who are on their way to Okwe should be allowed to continue? The seer we know is telling us all that we know. We need a seer that we don't know who should tell us exactly what we don't know. Okay? Presidency gave to my husband a class on Tuesday. 
I'm going to give you 10 million naira. You're still going to be a god anyway. But I want you to start up a business with it. Are you trying to trick me into something? Why would I want to do that? Uh, you've become the man I've always wanted. And I'm willing to do anything and everything to make you happy. That? The king. <sighs> Are you all right, my dear? Oh yes, of course. I am perfect. Okay. Are you all right? Call them back from um, Okbe or I, I, I shall I shall tell you when I get back. Okay, let's do that. Okay, I'll, I'll meet you. There is here in the great Iboku kingdom. That seer is looking at me, and his presence is affecting me. Huh? Your welcome has expired. You are disturbing us. Go back to your house. Yes, go. Yes, go. You others, I agreed. <laughs> no! I refuse to let him go. He will not go. The Ezemwa of Iboko is here present. And he is here with his staff of office. Let the seer of Iboko swear an oath that what he said was what he saw. I cannot say anything further until he has sworn validify his prophecy. Standing before His Majesty, King Gogene of the Buko Kingdom, I swear that what I said is what I saw. Nothing. 
without the gods. That is an evil corpse that must be thrown into the evil forest. He will never be mourned. Stretch out your hands. Step out here. Step out. There are two evil doors. That is number one. Are you number two evil door? Do not insult me. I am the queen of this land. Now are you the second evil doer? I Speak. am not an evil doer, you wretched fear of a You cannot intimidate me. Okay. There is only one way to confirm that you are not and it will do Give me your hands. We are two hands. Abomination! Strange bedfellows. Strange bedfellows. What do you mean by strange bedfellows? The nakedness of the queen of the Boku Kingdom is sacred. Progress and prosperity flow from her body. This woman has no regard for your cultures. Countless number of times these bedfellows have defied themselves on the good bed fixed in the good house. Hello! Hey! Abomination! This kingdom shall know no peace unless both of them are banished. They are evil. They must leave Iboku. The land of peace. Your Majesty, say something, Your Highness. Say something, say something. Helen. Oh, Helen. Ferdinand. Mm. It is my judgment that both of you shall be banished from this land for life.
your names and that of your families shall be forgotten in this land. You, you remain our enemy. And so, you, you, you must leave our land today. I have spoken, and so shall it be. Guards, take them away. With this going well, you may never know whom to trust, but with this fall apart, Secrets are revealed. Life's like a jungle of the wild. You may never know who to trust. Truth remains.